Hey, good morning once again, guys. It's Henry at Mowers and Blowers. It's uh, Monday morning. Uh, I believe it's March 2nd. So March is upon us. And um, this whole week's forecast is going to be in the mid-50s. So what I've been saying all year long is that do not count winter um, out because uh, a couple years ago here in New York, Long Island, um, we got four nor'easters in just a month of May at one time that dumped uh, probably 12 feet of snow at that time. While we didn't get anything last year, we've got pretty much nothing this year. I mean, uh, I can recall maybe two snow events that were about an inch or so each. So that's really pathetic, you know what I mean? Um, even though I said, you never know, we could get snow in March and April here, you know? Just doesn't seem like it. Anyway, as you guys saw, I did two episodes on this LT1000 hydrostatic uh, lawn tractor, LT1000, without a deck. The reason why I've never put the deck on here, even though I don't have a deck, but I could go get a deck, you know? But uh, when I got this, every single thing related to a mower deck was removed. Uh, lifters, hangers, rods everything. All that's left is this um, handle here. Even if you go underneath and you see if you pull this upwards, will there be two little hangers that pull up and down? That's gone too. Everything's gone. So I've taken apart two or three of these things. It's not easy to take apart. And when you do take it apart, it takes you a day to take it apart. It'll take you three days to put it back together again, you know, even if you had every single thing, you know. So this is just going to be a mud mower. Uh, I'm going to sell it. I'm not going to. I'm going to sell it as a uh, just a utility tractor, you know, uh, for hauling things, pulling things uh, like my plug aerator as well as my uh, trailer. I know some nut out there wants something like this because it's honestly, it's pretty useful, you know. Um, so as you guys know, I uh, did a pulley swap on this. I put a six inch pulley on here and uh, it does go you know, a lot faster than what it normally does. As you know, this is a hydrostatic transmission. Typically, these don't go very fast, you know what I'm saying? They whine. Uh, this one doesn't whine very much, so you know that the tranny is pretty good. With the pulley on there, it does go much faster, but I'm a little worried about it burning up the gears because I don't think the hydrostatic transmissions are designed to go that speed, you know? Which is the reason why their transmission pulley is very small as compared to regular five or six speed transmissions where the pulley is this big, you know? This is like that big. So I don't think it was designed to really go that fast, you know, for a long period of time. Anyway, um, so while it starts, runs, and drives pretty well, right? I wanted to paint all the wheels black because, you know, it's mismatched. You know, this one has, is, is kind of a black with some red in it, and that one's white, and that one's gray, and the other one's white, you know? Um, all four wheels do hold air. For a while yesterday, as you know, I cleaned out the uh, gas tank as well as the fuel lines and replaced the fuel filter, right? And I kind of blew out the carburetor. It's a three screw uh, opposed twin carburetor, right? This is a uh, Briggs 19.5 opposed twin engine. And while it runs pretty well, it's got a uh, earl encased all around it. Um, when I first removed the double stack pulley from this initially, right just before I was putting on the uh, um, the pulley swap, the big, the bigger pulley, right? Uh, I noticed that there was a lot of oil on the double stack pulley. And so I had initially said that um, it's probably the crank seal is leaking. But actually when I looked at the double stack pulley, right? The top pulley, which is right underneath the crank seal is dry. It was the bottom mower deck pulley that um, had a lot of oil in it. So. I think it's just like the sump, the sump gasket was, um, you know, uh, worn or something. Um, as you also know, I went around and I hand tightened all the sump bolts as well as the rear access cover bolts. And I could turn each between a quarter turn to a half a turn. So maybe I fixed it, you know. Uh, regardless though, there is a lot of oil encased all around it. So. I also want to um, swap out the carburetor because this carburetor seems like while well, it was running fine yesterday, right? At times, 
it wants to stall if I don't have it on choke, you know? So I think either there's not enough gas in it or um, even though I think the fuel pump is working really well because you saw the pulse from initial startup, um, maybe it's not getting enough gas, but I want to, I want to, you know, try to fine tune that a little bit and maybe put another carburetor. I have a four screw Nikki that I had cleaned from another project, that 14 episode one. So I might want to swap that carburetor out just to see if it runs a little bit better and more reliable, you know? So speaking about reliability, um, I'm going to put some more gas in here. I just drove my daughter to school this morning and got 10 gallons of gas. I'm going to need it, you know, eventually. So we'll put some more gas in here, fresh gas, and uh, swap out the carburetor, paint the rims, and maybe use my air compressor and blow out all that earl underneath, you know. Let's see if it starts up right now. So because um, I had gas in the tank, I was worried that when I, when I store this thing with the seat up like this, right, the gas tank is completely exposed to the elements, right? So I put this over the gas tank in case it rained last night so I wouldn't get gas uh, or water into the gas tank, but I'm not really too sure. Also, if you look at this seat, it's trashed. I might try to fix that today too. So this is the uh, third episode of um, this LT1000 without a deck. It's kind of a cool mower, you know what I'm saying? So let's see if it starts up. Choke. Like I said, it's not super reliable, you know? Yep. So I want to take it off a choke. It wants to stall. Try it again. Pushing the choke lever all the way down. Got to pull it up just for it to stay running. So I'm going to get this into the garage. Yes, I know. It's not even eight o'clock yet, and I got this twin cylinder lawnmower running in the neighborhood. My neighbors love me. I love working on lawn tractors a lot more than anything else because at the end of the day, you can ride on them. I always like backing it in because you can just drive out. So far, so good. It's at low idle, idles well, but like I said, choke handle is practically all the way up. It seems to run pretty well though now actually. And as you can see there's uh, no smoke at all. I mean from the amount of oil that's all around the engine, there's no smoke at all. It's pretty good. You know what? I should have uh, tested the um, charging. Let's test the, let's test the uh, vo um, voltage. It's at uh, 12.6 and climbing. Twelve 
I want to see if it goes over 13, 93, 95, 97, 98, 13 volts. You know, so actually it runs pretty good now. I mean, as long as I keep the choke lever up here, right, runs fine, you know. I don't know, sometimes I think uh, if it ain't broke, don't fix it, right? But uh, I would like to have it uh, running perfectly, so I'm just going to try another carb. If that doesn't work, I'll just put this back on. First thing we're going to do is remove the hood so I have better access to the uh, carburetor. Like I said, Craftsman hoods are very easy to remove. And to be honest with you, this, this hood could use a little bit of... You know what? It's not ru really that rusty. It just needs a little bit of wiping down. Maybe I'll use some uh, ATF to fix that. So now we're a little bit closer now, and um, you guys can see exactly what I'm doing. I'm just uh, removing this little nut over here. You're a nut. <coughs> I'm using my lavalier because the, um, you know, as you guys saw, I was riding around with the engine on, and I was still talking. Normally, if I didn't have this thing, you guys wouldn't be able to hear anything that I said. I'd be screaming, you know what I mean? So this lavalier seems to work very well. Uh, my friend Jason says that his wife, Chris, bought it for him, and it, he hasn't gotten it to work. Um, if you messed with the frequency, maybe that has something to do with it. But theoretically, all you have to do is just turn it on both of them now you you did turn on both of them right the receiver and the transmitter because if you don't turn on one or the other it's not going to work they both have to be on so look as you can see it runs great with the choke plate almost completely closed which means that the it, it's not getting um something's clogged in there the air fuel mixture is not correct we get you a little bit closer this is for people who have never taken apart or taken out a opposed twin carburetor before. So it's three screws. Be careful not to drop that into the uh, mouth of the carburetor since it's pointing upwards. Believe me, I've done it before. There are three 516 um, screws that hold the air cleaner base. And this part just comes right off. There's a um, breather hose that's there. Just bend it, pull it out. That's what she said. Here's the gassage, right? Gassage, as you see, there's, uh, there is an air bubble here. You want to try to get air bubbles out of there because, well, that's not good. <laughs> so I'm going to pull this out. Let me get a clamp. I wanted to get an early start today. I don't usually come out here at eight in the morning because the reason why is my brother who lives on, in Los Angeles, he likes to watch uh, Formula One. I'm more of an indie guy, as you guys know. Anyway, so he got me into watching Formula One a little bit. There's this Netflix special called uh, Drive to Survive. It's very cool. I saw season one on Netflix, and um, it's a really cool series. It's very exciting. Let's you learn more about the sport, how it works, you know, the DRS, uh, drivers, and the driver drama that's involved with professional open wheel racing. I'm marking this so I know exactly where it goes, but normally I have to retune it anyway. It's also a 516 um, 
remove the, or just loosen the screw so you can get the throttle cable out. It's a Z-bend. It's the last hole over here. So that's removed, right? Here's a pulse line to get the, uh, this is the pulse line from the crankcase. The pulse moves the diaphragms to get that vacuum pump action for the attached fuel pump. Remember, this opposed twin carburetor has a fuel pump already attached, so you don't need to get a separate one. Um, that's, that's really it. Um, you have two 716s, I believe, on the bottom. Remove that, and this whole carburetor comes right out. I'm going to go to the back and get that other carburetor. So I've got a socket, the 716s on there. This uh, one that's facing the, um, the one in the front, it's a little difficult to get the socket in there. It's so tight in between the assembly and the screw. So you almost have to use like an open-ended wrench to get that one out. The one in the back is a little better. So remember, um, this runs right. It's just not perfect, you know, because of the choke plate. So it's just two seven sixteenths that come out just like that. I do have a habit of doing that. And this comes right off. Um, there's a linkage here, right? Comes right off, just like that. Now, I'm going to remove this. I'm going to take it off. And there it is, just like that. This is the three screw carburetor. People say they like this the best, but honestly, I think it's uh, the fuel pump for the four screw Nikki is easier to work on, believe it or not. I mean, Nikki's usually are not easier, but I find the four screw ones better. So I just went to the shed and I picked this one up. This is a four screw Nikki original. It's in good condition. It's been cleaned. Uh, this was working on the other um, 20.5 horsepower one that I rebuilt. I rebuilt it actually into a 21. So how did that go? Just went like that. Make sure it has the gasket, it does. Slip that back into this hole. Is that it? Is that exactly the way I just did it? No, because it's not moving. Okay, it is. And uh, I'm just gonna put those two screws back in. I mean, it's that easy to, to remove, you know? So getting back to what I was saying, um, I wanted to get my work done today on this thing button it up you know I, I just gotta chip away at every little thing make every one uh, acceptable to me you know I have a little OCD and uh, if things aren't the way I want it um, I don't feel good about it and I think about it and think about it and I don't get much sleep when you know it doesn't work out the way I want it it's like I'll think at night and then you know I I've got to fix that I gotta fix that seat on that one, and that one looks a little dirty, and you know, it's not it's not good. It's not good to have OCD. It, my OCD is not that bad because um, a person with bad OCD would not rest until this thing was you know you could eat off of it, you know. And obviously, this is not like that, so I'm not that bad. But I know people who are. That's a sickness. But I would like to get every every piece of my equipment, you know, as perfect as possible. Henry, you're, you're going to break it. That's it, Henry. Okay, yep, you're right. Sometimes I want to just over-tighten things.
Z bend back into the bottom hole. Now look, so forget about that black thing that I just did. I'm going to show you how to just do it from scratch. So if you pull the throttle, uh, the choke cable all the way up, make sure that the thing is closed. Then you push down on it and you want to make sure that it's open all the way. So push this forward until it goes all the way open. Okay. So the um, choke lever is all the way down. This thing is all the way open. Now you hold it here and you pull it and it, all, and it closes all the way. So that's what you want right there. So then you grab your 516 again and just tighten it. Très facile. That's uh, Chinese for easy. Henry, that's not Chinese. That's French. Shh, don't tell everybody. I'm trying to teach the viewers a little bit of Mandarin. But Henry, you don't really speak Mandarin. So we connected that choke cable here, right? Just want to show you how it works. Pull the choke up. It's all the way closed. Push it down. It's all the way open. Now we have the fuel. Hey. Pulse line. Hey. You know, this pulse line is So you're not supposed to have fuel in the pulse line. <laughs> and also, when I'm moving this pulse line around from the crankcase fitting, it's very loose. And it has this silly uh, hose clamp on it, which wasn't really holding it. So you know what? The pulse is very important can't have any leaks or gaps in it right this didn't even have a clamp on there you the the uh, fuel pump will run much better if you had a solid rubber hose that had good fittings on each end so I'm gonna replace this yucky one here right and get a new line I've got a rubber hose here this one's in pretty good shape it's uh, used but it's rubbery and it's about that same length the uh, ends are clear and not broken or cracked. Got a couple of brand new uh, hose clamps here, so. I'll feel better that, because uh, this could contribute to certain things uh, not running perfectly. Like for instance, an important part, which is your fuel pump. So I've got one end in already. feel much better about this. Now you have a nice seal for the pulse. Yeah, that's good. Fuel. That's done. Let's see. Let's move the throttle a little bit. There we go. All right, you know what? Let's uh, start this up and see. What do you guys think? This will run better? We shall find out. Brake is on. Choke. Okay. Uh, throttle about the middle. Here we go. The fuel. Choke, taking it off choke.
the throttle. Choke is halfway. Yeah, so almost the same problem. It's a little bit better, but the choke was about halfway open and it ran pretty well. Just tuned it up a little bit. pretty well now. Not bad. Definitely runs better than before. I'm going to put everything back now. I'm going to put this cover back on. With this, um, this breather hose back in here. So I have this thing listed for 375. I don't think anybody would buy it for 375 because it's um <laughs> I mean, you only can use it for one purpose and that's just driving it around hauling things. You know? So I don't think I'm going to sell it. This gasket is not aligned. It's kind of like a cool machine just to have for your yard. I mean, I will eventually sell it because, like I said, if I move in the next uh, four years or so, I'm, I can't take, the, with, take, take it with me. So I'll probably end up giving it away. When I say give it away, I mean just sell it cheap, you know? 200 bucks, something like that. Bracket goes on like that. Air cleaner has these two screws of uh, nuts. It's supposed to have wing nuts, but for some reason, people just take the wing nuts and they throw them away or something. I mean, wing nuts are always missing from these things. Always. You don't have to torque them down. It's just sitting there it's tight enough so that it won't move around and rattle one big bolt this should be a wing nut as well but like i said wing nuts are always missing i'm going to get my fire up my air compressor and just i know i'm going to make a mess but i'm just going to blow out all that um caked in earl all over the place um it doesn't seem to be leaking i mean i've looked around there's no wet Earl, so I think I might have fixed the oil leaks. I could power wash it, but like I said, it's still winter time and it's still winter time, so I don't have my uh, water pipes turned on outdoors. So it's kind of um, because the engine's been running for a while, right? The oil is just like soft now. You can just blow it off. See what I'm saying? So the cleaner you have it, uh, the better it is and easier it is for you to find oil leaks if there are any. So that's what I wanted to do. I want to clean this up a little bit. 
just so that I could see oil leaks in the future. about that guys so I painted the rims black I tightened the head bolts because they were kind of loose I thought maybe that's where the uh, leak was coming from I also tightened the sump bolts a little bit more too I used the uh, air compressor and blew out all that earl that was all around the engine right but look at look at the way this looks man does that look badass or what um, I also fixed the seat, as you guys saw. I ripped off the um, duct tape that was uh, just shriveled and worn, and I put some um, Gorilla tape on it, right? And then used the heating method. Thanks for to uh, Nick from Medford who came up with it. Very good idea. But uh, this thing looks great, man. Looks great. I'm just going around it, uh, taking some pictures. Probably list this for three seventy-five. Yeah, maybe three seventy-five. I mean, it's got a nineteen point five, 
you know, a post twin engine. That's like that's like two hundred, three hundred dollars, right? Or two fifty. I also wiped it down with ATF, as you saw. What a difference it makes, man! Doesn't it? it looks badass. I I also cleaned up the engine too. Did quite a bit. I'm pretty satisfied with the way it looks. Uh, you couldn't have asked for a better um, result, you know? Before I park this thing, I'm going to put some of this uh, Safeguard Ethanol Fuel Conditioner with Stabilizer. Uh, this fills up to uh, 25 gallons. I'm going to put like maybe one or two gallons in here, so just a little bit. That's it. It's about uh, less than an ounce. Uh, maybe a little bit. I'm gonna aim this. Jesus. Holy cow. Henry, get some in the tractor. So that's my video for today, fellas. <clears throat> Got the tractor from the back to the front. We did a carburetor swap. It runs better now. Uh, I adjusted the choke linkage so that it, it works right where you pull it all the way and it's choked. And when you push it all the way down, it's running good at high um, RPMs. We uh, painted the rims. I flipped it on its side, cleared out all the buildup of Earl old Earl all around, cleaned up the uh, regular stuff here, um, actually tightened up the head bolts over there. You could turn it a quarter turn, and I thought maybe that's where the leak was coming from. I'm surprised the engine even runs if it leaks oil out of the heads, you know what I mean? Uh, while I cleaned up all the areas over there, I didn't see any leaks around the sump or the rear um, access panel, so uh, we'll watch those leaks as they come around, but uh, this thing doesn't even smoke, you know what I mean? Just has a lot of oil buildup from previous i don't know what happened you know but there doesn't appear to be any leaks that i know of uh we went over it with some atf it looks fantastic i also fixed the seat took off the old duct tape put some new uh, gorilla tape on there and then heated it up with a blowtorch you know uh to help it adhere and make it more tackier um that's pretty good that's pretty much it uh wiped it all down with atf i think thing looks great runs great drives great you know and it looks great <clears throat> I'm pretty much done with this now. I'll see you guys next time on Mowers and Blowers. Next time on Mowers and Blowers.